YouTubers, Charles Rowe here. Uh, thank you for watching today's tutorial about masking. As you can see here, I have a picture of my nephew. Uh, this was uh, a couple months ago, back at Thanksgiving, and I showed him how to make a, a little gun uh, out of Lego blocks, and uh, we made an animation out of it, actually. Uh, it's called Lego Gun Blaster. You can find the link below. Uh, he doesn't even realize I made it, but he shoots a, a big uh, big bullet out of it. Or, well, not a big bullet, but there's a big muzzle flash that comes out of it, and a light cast, and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, let's get to today's tutorial, masking. Um, there are a few ways to mask. You can use um, the shape tool, uh, and the shape tool comes with rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, uh, polygon, and star tool. Or you can choose to uh, make a, a mask uh, freely with the pen tool. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to mask something with a shape. So let's go ahead and create a solid. Uh, command Y is a shortcut. Click inside the timeline, Command Y is a shortcut, and we're just going to make it comp size. Uh, just in case you don't know how to do this, you just click Layer, uh, go to New, and then Solid will be uh, one of the drop down menus. Click OK. All right. Um, now, there's two things you can do. You can either, um, while you have the layer selected, just pick your shape and go inside of um, the, the canvas or your, your viewer and just click and drag. You can make whatever size you want. If you hold the shift button, it'll make a perfect um, circle. Or um, if you hold the, the command button where you have your original point, uh, where you first start the, the circle, it'll make a circle at that point. And if you hold shift and command, it'll make a perfect circle at that point. Uh, let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, so those are, um, that's how you can kind of make a mask um, just with the shape, but you can manipulate this mask in any way you want. Um, you can click the pen tool, uh, hold down, you have the option of having a pen tool, add a vertex tool, delete a vertex tool, or convert a vertex tool. I'm going to click convert vertex. Now just in case you're not familiar with a vertex, this point, this point right here, these are all vertex. So if I click it, then boom, I just turned it into a square. Turn it back to a circle. Uh, well, kind of like a circle, like a like a square circle. Um, if I click and hold, then this little icon uh, or this little uh, tool starts to allow me to really mess with the shape how I want it to look, you know. Um, and that's just simple stuff, you know. That's just how you manipulate um, a shape that you've already made into a mask. Um, but if you wanted to create your own shape into a mask or you wanted to create your own mask, period, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Let's just click mask, delete. Uh, I want to click the whole thing. Delete the whole thing. Uh, then click the pen tool. Click and hold and go to the pen tool and just click away. You'll start creating some sort of mask out of this layer. And let's close it up. Boom. Now we got a mask um, around the black shape or the black uh, solid. It's really simple. Um, ma uh, using the pen tool and masking used to be the old way to rotoscope. Um, and so you can actually animate your mask um, and how you want it to move uh, depending on how the object moves. So for instance, let's say um, we want to have the mask start right here. Uh, let's click our uh, selection tool, select the mask, uh, go to right here in the drop down where um, in, your, uh, in your timeline. Uh, you want to click this drop down next to mask one uh, and click mask path. You want to click the stopwatch for mask path. So we'll click that. Uh, we can go over a few frames and then you can just click a point or hold shift and click a point. And now you'll see the point becomes like a, uh, like a transparent white box or a yellow box. Um, just click and drag that point wherever you want it to go. And I'll show you how that animates now. Go back to the beginning and watch. Boom, you see? Now it changes its shape. And that's just keyframing back to you know basic animation, advanced animation, understanding those principles and applying it to a mask. And now you can animate a mask how you want. Um, First, sometimes it's easy to use. Like if you're, um, if you want to, you know, mask out maybe a background, um, and you don't quite understand how to rotoscope yet, which I'll teach in another tutorial. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, masking can be used to um, work the same way. Um, you can feather it. You can make sure the edges are curved. Um, you can do a lot of different things with the mask, but uh, this could work really well, especially if you're working with like buildings because they're even shapes. You know what I mean? It's not really too difficult to mask out uh, maybe the sky inside of a, a building or not. Um, but um, 
yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty simple. Uh, but now let me show you how to make a mask with curved edges using the pen tool. Uh, you want to click the pen, and then you click your first point, but instead of letting go of your first point, you now start to drag out until you have these little lines come out of it, and that's signifying that you're going to start creating a curve. Now you go somewhere else and click another point, but instead of letting go, do the same thing over and over again. And now you can create sort of like a curvy mask rather than pointed edges. And again, this can be animated as well. And then you just close it up. Boom. Now we have a, a curvy mask created out of, from the pen tool. And so it's really that simple. Um, now, one thing a lot of people don't know about um, the mask is that um, when you create a mask, the mask is, whatever's masked is what's inside of your selection. Sometimes people will create a mask and they really want what's outside the selection to be masked and not what's inside the selection. It's an easy fix. Um, every single layer and every single mask has what they call an option or a layer options or layer properties or mask properties, mask options. In this case, we're going to um, change the mask properties from add to subtract and watch what happens. Boom. See, it pretty much inverts the mask so that everything else is masked except for what the original selection was. You can do that with any kind of mask, whether it's the pen tool or you make one out of a shape. It's really simple. It's nothing to it. Um, but that's pretty much how you um, create a mask with pen tool. And now I want to show you one last trick on how to create a mask. And then we're going to show you um, some more uh, information about actually utilizing a mask, uh, aside from animating the shape. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Now, remember I say we can use the ellipse tool or the rectangle tool and create a mask with a shape? Well, if you go over here to that actual tool, select it once, and leave your cursor over top of it and double click it again, you're going to see um, a perfect oval mask uh, inside of your window. And what it's going to do is it's going to create four points, one here, 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 and here. And it's going to be a perfect oval mask inside. If I wanted to do one with the square, the triangle, I mean the 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 polygon or the star tool, it's going to do the exact same thing, but I like using the ellipse tool. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and double click, and then boom, you see the perfect oval inside of here? Now, I like this oval because it helps you make a vignette, but we, again, have to invert it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the mask options, or mask properties, and click subtract. And now we have a, a very bold vignette that we still need to edit and work with and make sure it looks right. So now I'm going to show you how to edit a mask um, as if you were editing a layer. You have four options, mask path, mask feather, mask opacity, and mask expansion. Uh, masking path just pretty much allows you to change the shape of it. You can animate the change in shapes as well, and that helps you with rotoscoping. Mask feather just allows you to feather the edges so it's not so hard around um, where the mask was. So... Let's say we bring that up some to about uh, 200. Let's say 200 is a good number. I'll just go ahead and type that in. All right. Um, that's how you, you know, that's actually how you make a vignette um, with whatever program you're using. Just create a little mask or something and, a, uh, and feather the edges. That's pretty much it. But it's still a little hard. So um, you can either mask the opacity and just bring the opacity down some. Or you can do what I like to do and bring the expansion back some uh, right around the edges over here. The expansion just pretty much allows you to change the size of the mask. Um, and if you go um, positive uh, pixels, you're going to um, expand the mask outward. If you go negative um, pixels, you're going to uh, expand the mask inwards. If I'm using the right words, I doubt I am, but I'm sure you got what I'm saying. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand the mask outwards just about this much, about 127. Then we're going to um, feather it just a little bit more and make the, the vignette softer. And uh, let's select out of it. And that's how you uh, edit a mask. Uh, it's really, really simple. I already showed you how to animate a mask. It's really not that difficult. 
um, editing and working with masks are really, really fun. Uh, they really, really help you a lot, especially when you're animating text or animating objects, moving them around places because sometimes you need them to uh, appear like they're behind certain things, but they're really not behind certain things. Um, and you can use masks in a way to utilize that and really make it look great. I also like using masks for still images uh, because there's so many different things you can do with a mask um, for a still image as well that can give you really, really cool features um, that can really make things pop and, and look great. Uh, for instance, um, let's say I, I wanted to you know, darken everything in the background but leave my nephew uh, the regular skin tone, then I can just mask everything around him, you know, like so, and then leave the rest of the mask to, you know, be over top of uh, the background. And then I just drop the opacity down and feather the edges just a little bit so it kind of blends in with the, the, the edge of his body and whatnot. And then the background is going to look extremely dark, but he's going to look extremely bright. You know, it's a way to play with um, the image from in post. And that's why I love working in post because you can do things that you can't do in real life in post and make it look that much better. So thank you for watching today's tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's really uh, simple to understand. If you have any questions, please send me a message, uh, send me an email, or drop a comment below. I'd love to help you out with whatever you'd like to know. Thank you and have a good one.